resting place the church is a people i am the church you are the church we are the church together all who follow jesus all around the world yes we're the church together we're many kinds of people Peace be unto you. I'm Reverend Lynn Geiger. I'm also a 20 year member here and a Stephen minister. And I've taught uh, Sunday school from time to time. I love this church because not only is there a rainbow on the outside, it's part of the decor, there's a rainbow on the inside. We're very pleased that you join us today for worship this Pentecost Sunday. There's some disturbing things going on in, in the world today. Not just death from the coronavirus, but death from hate, racism. I don't want us to take that lightly today or any day. As a person of color, as a gay female, It's pretty tough, but I want to believe in a God that will rescue us at some point in our lives on our journey. Scripture today from the book of Acts, second chapter, I'm going to be starting at the 14th verse. I'll be reading from the African American Jubilee Edition Bible, so the words may sound a little different. Verse 14, Peter stood with the eleven apostles and spoke in a loud and clear voice to the crowd. Friends and everyone else living in Jerusalem, listen carefully to what I have to say. You are wrong to think that these people are drunk. After all, it is only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is what God had the prophet Joel say. When the last days come, I will give my spirit to everyone. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will have dreams. In those days, I will give my spirit to my servants, both men and women. And they will prophesy. I will work miracles in the sky above and wonders on the earth below. There will be blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will turn dark and the moon will be as red as blood before the great and wonderful day. Of the Lord appears, then the Lord will save everyone who asks for his help. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the readers of the living word. And our affirmation today, you are a child of the most high God and a beauty to behold. God bless you. Darkness vanished away. See in this space our fear. 
and forsaken Gather us in the blind and the lame Call to us now and we shall awaken We shall arise at the sound of our Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning for worship at Vancouver Heights United Methodist Church. Before we continue with this morning's worship service, I'd like to thank Lynn Geiger for opening us with prayers and scripture. And I'd also like to thank Melly and Ariel, who will be sharing scripture readings with us later in the service in both the English and Spanish translations. At this time, I have a couple of prayer requests that I'd like to share with you. We ask that you keep Mary Orange in your prayers as she continues to experience pain and discomfort in her back. And we ask that you pray for Renee Gaines as well, who was admitted to the hospital earlier this week with heart issues. Please keep both of these women and their families in your prayers. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and I'd like to share with you a story out of the Complete Illustrated Children's Bible called The Holy Spirit, from Acts 2. It was ten days since Jesus had been taken up to heaven. The twelve disciples for they had chosen a man named Matthias to join them to take the place of Judas Iscariot, were gathered together when suddenly 
The house was filled with the sound of a mighty wind coming from heaven. As they watched in wonder, tongues of fire seemed to rest on each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different languages, languages they had never spoken before or studied. Hearing the commotion, a huge crowd gathered outside. Great was their amazement when the disciples came out and began talking in different languages. How can this be? they exclaimed. There are people here from Asia and Egypt, from Libya and Crete, from Rome and Arabia. How can we all be hearing them using our own languages to tell us about God? Some people only wanted to make fun of what was happening. They've all been drinking too much wine, they mocked. Then Peter stepped forward. Listen, he said loudly. Of course we are not drunk. We have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Just a few weeks ago, Jesus from Nazareth died on a cross. Yet any one of us can tell you that God has raised Jesus to life. This was all part of God's plan. You know that Jesus was sent to you by God. For he worked many miracles and showed you many signs. But God had planned that Jesus would be handed over to you. So you rejected him and had him killed by evil men. Yet death could not hold him. God made this Jesus, whom you crucified, Lord and Messiah. The people looked worried and distraught. What had they done, and how could they make it better? If you really are sorry, Peter went on, then repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and your sins will be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is not just for you but for your children too, and for people who are far away. God's gift is for everyone. Last week, we talked about the ascension, when Jesus went up into heaven. But remember, he promised the disciples that God would send the Holy Spirit to be with them. This week is Pentecost Sunday. It is the day when the Holy Spirit came to the disciples. We celebrate today because it was exciting. The Holy Spirit helped the disciples share God's love with the whole world. And since the Holy Spirit is in us, we can help share God's love as well. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Bye, friends. Oh, let the Son of God fold you with His Spirit and His love. Let Him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. and make you
the song with gladness as your hearts are filled with joy. Lift your hands in sweet surrender to his name. Oh, give him all your tears and sadness. Give him all your years of pain. And you'll enter into life in Jesus' name. to me and drink he who believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified hello I'm Ramelis Mickelson Melly and I will be reading the Spanish version of John 7, 37 to 39, and this is the Reina Valera edition, Rios de Agua Viva. En el último y gran día de la fiesta, Jesús se puso en pie y alzó la voz, diciendo, Si alguno tiene sed, venga a mí y beba. El que cree en mí, como dice la Escritura, de su interior correrán ríos de agua viva. Esto dijo del Espíritu que habían de recibir los que creyesen en él, pues aún no había venido el Espíritu Santo, porque Jesús no había sido aún glorificado. So ends the reading of the word. The Lord be with you. And I welcome you one more time to the Parsonage, which is just across the street from the church. I'm on um, Arizona in Santa Fe, and it's quiet right now. Um, it's not often quiet out here. Um, if you've been watching our videos for more than a couple of weeks, you know that the natural color of my hair is no longer purple. And you've noticed that we do not have a very large number of men white men specifically in our worship services as the leaders. Uh, we do have a, a good number of men in our church who lead from the back in many ways um, that are quiet. Uh, we have a black truck that shows up from time to time and we know that that means Monty is at large and there will be something amazing that will happen. Uh, in this last week, I had a crew of eight men that um, completely repainted the parsonage after they had done some gardening in the last month. So here you are, welcome. I've got a couple of symbols this morning for Pentecost. Now, typically, um, if we are following Luke or Acts, we see the Pentecost season as almost a birthday party. Uh, we wear our red and our orange, and we come and we celebrate together. We often talk about the many languages that were spoken on that very first Pentecost. Um, and that was about the Holy Spirit coming to the disciples and allowing dis the disciples that were there to be able to speak in a way that connected with the people that were in the crowd. And so more than God wanting to give us um, lots of different languages, God wants us to connect and God wants us to find ways to be present with one another um, so that we might together be um, aware of, of God's presence. 
So here in my garden, I have a peace pole, and um, there are eight languages on my peace pole, and then there's also braille, and um, there's another language that just by the fact that we are in this space is spoken, and that is a language of privilege. Um, the privilege being that I have just my, myself, my husband, and my daughter who live in this home. And we are relatively safe here. We don't worry that our doors are locked or not locked. Maybe somebody will mess with our mail, but our lives are never physically in danger because we live in this spot. We are privileged. My church is filled with people who have been marginalized, people who had their feelings hurt, who have been excluded, who have been left out, who have not been called forth. And, and our greatest mission is to gather together all of the many marginalized that um, together we might support and love one another. But today I think the, the gospel and, and the season takes us into a deeper message. Um, it takes us beyond the languages we know and into a place of discomfort and sometimes fear. It calls us to, to look out at those whose lives may be different than ours, and by the mere color of their skin or the place in which they were born, they will never feel safe um, as they just move around and do um, what we take for granted. In the Gospel of John, um, Instead of the images of fire, Jesus talks often about the living water. In the fourth chapter, he talks about the woman at the well and his offer to her um, to, to give her living water. In the scripture that um, will be read for us today, I think it's Melly and Ariel that are reading for us, um, we hear about the living water that is of Jesus. It comes from God. It flows through the body of Jesus, it, throw, it flows through his life, and it pours out onto the disciples. Um, it, it's poured out onto us that we might be witnesses um, in this world. We can look at um, the image of the soldier piercing the side of Jesus um, after his death, and out from his body flows living so what does that look like then to be a church today um, that celebrate the spirit with with water that is meant to be poured out on everyone not just a dabble at a baptism not just a touch but a whole lot for all people in all times so that we all might experience god's presence and in Acts, that looks like people each having something that they are now able to do, whether it's dreaming a dream or sharing a prophecy, so that God's word might be brought to life. Today in our reality, uh, what will it take for us to allow God's word to be spoken in the midst of the chaos of shootings and uh, unfair tragedies. I think for a white person of privilege, I need to listen. My new language needs to be about listening to stories and finding ways to connect and to help us all connect with Jesus and the hope and strength that he brings. He was in the chapter uh, has read for us from John today, he has been pushed out from the places of leadership. He doesn't look like the Messiah. He doesn't look like someone that they would have as their leader. It's set up early on that he will not be accepted, and yet he chooses to continue, and um, we choose to continue to show the world a different face of God, to show the world that God is humbly before us, and that God wants to hear our stories, and that God does want to gather each and every one of us in. We as a church are called to a season of listening and a season of sharing. 
and perhaps a season of sharing with another congregation. What does it look like to move this nation forward in God's grace and love? Amen. So I want to thank those who have shared this worship service with us today. I want to thank Lynn Geiger from California and um, Ariel and Melly and Stephanie and Robbie and Abby, I think that's all of us, but I also want to thank um, all of those folks in our congregation who have our backs, um, beginning with our, our white men of privilege who work so hard to put each and every one of us forward and to help us to be our best. I want to um, thank the goodness of this congregation and all that we have done as we are um, not physically able to be together, but certainly the love that we share um, continues to bless all of us and bless our communities. Mafi, <laughs> My name is Sione Malua. I am the pastor for the Tongan Fellowship at uh, Vancouver Heights. And I want to grab this opportunity to send to my fellow uh, uh, Vancouver Heights United Methodist our love and our and and present to you uh, how we miss you in this time and and we love you all and we we still doing fine in a time of a close down but we all fine and and happy and and we we still accept what God gives to us every day and enjoy the life. This is what we do. And we believe this is what God wants us to be. He don't want us to be quiet. He wants us to be happy. Because we believe in Jesus. And we and Jesus give us life abundantly. Let us pray. Oh God Almighty. We came today to celebrate the life you give to us. You give us life to be happy and healthy and we have it all. And that's why we come over here today to show you how we really appreciate what you're doing for us. And Jesus, pray for us in a time in this world is very hard because of of this virus COVID-19 but all those things is happening in this world 
the racism and all those fight and all those quarrel in this world, we still hold on for the light Jesus give to us and say you have life abundantly. And we celebrate it every day at home, but we still miss our church. We looking forward, you bring us together in the future to do our service together and enjoy our fellowship with each other. We ask this in the name of the, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. So now we are on the second take of our benediction because in the process of wrapping up our gear, one of my neighbors walked by. Um, as the Holy Spirit would have it, I remember that he speaks Hebrew and he was willing to offer our benediction of the day. I was, I'm just a neighbor here. I saw my, my neighbor uh, with this beautiful call and I saw the Hebrew words. And typically every time when I see Hebrew words, they are spelled wrong. But anyway, what it says is Yashre Shalom Alei Adamot, which means uh, it will bring peace on earth. Uh, I'm much more modest. I just say Yashre Shalom Ba neighborhood. So it will be easy if we will have just peace in the neighborhood first. And then we'll just can be much more uh, advanced, you know, ambitious. So thank you very much. So all that I would then say is may God bless you and keep you. May God make God's face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift God's countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. <laughs>